What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crappers Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again with another Friday stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic that I've clickbaited you with this week. Uh, and this week is no exception. Uh, let's see who's in the chat. Let me pull it up real quick. I, I'm a little bit uh, behind on this preparation, which, you know, is it not just the usual for me? Okay, let's see. In the YouTube chat. Okay, let me pull up the other screen because I think that I'm missing some folks. Uh, let's see. Hello to uh, I Despise Nicknames, Peter Max Freeze Jensen, uh, Data Monoid, DJ Thulu, uh, Anton, Andrew, Nick. Uh, let's see. Big people are old. Okay. Uh, old Muel. All right. Bionic Babblefish, Ashraz, uh, Ivan. Nice to see you. Let's see. Uh, also on the IRC side, we have... Uh, Drishal, Nakotani, Gun, uh, Dazaj, uh, let's see, Osloy, AFM Victoria, Shom, uh, Alternate Ved, Benoit, Glenn, uh, Alejandro, Cal2001, did I miss anybody? Yell your name if I missed you. The Dave aspect, not sure what that's referring to. Um, uh, I think that's it, right? That's it. Yes, people were wondering why the stream didn't start. Am I not always late? Am I not always late? Don't you know this by now? All right, let's see. So uh, I'll get to the comments in the chat in a little bit. So before I do that, let's get into the news really quickly. I'm, I'm kind of tired. I've been like recording videos all day. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm basically redoing the uh, hands-on gal scheme for beginners course as a pre-recorded course, and I'm trying to improve the material a ton, which I did, and I'm having to record videos for all of it, so I have like a two, three hour marathon session of recording and editing videos and uploading videos and all that stuff. And then, you know, when you have a, a baby waking you up three times in the middle of the night, certainly makes things a little bit challenging to, uh, to manage your uh, awakeness and alertness during the day. So, uh, not so much for news today, uh, the only thing that's really worth mentioning, which I think is probably, you know, super important to mention, is the Spring Lisp Game Jam is, has just been announced by uh, Dave Thompson, good, good old Dave Thompson, who's usually here in the chat, but I think that uh, the time change has kept him out today. Um, uh, the page is here, Spring Lisp Game Jam 2024. Uh, this is a, what is it, like a seasonal event? I think it happens in spring and autumn, only two seasons, but... It's an event where uh, you have 10 days to write a game using a Lisp. It could be any Lisp you like, Common Lisp, Scheme, uh, Fennel, your own Lisp, whatever you want. Um, but the point is just to have fun writing a game with Lisp. Uh, it's starting on May 17th and ending at May 27th. It uh, starts at about a month and a half, I guess. So uh, it's perfect timing for me because I'll be back from Libra Planet that week, or I guess the week after, sorry. The week before this starts, I'll be back from Libra Planet, so I'll have time to uh, get my brain back together and be ready to hack on some scheme code. Probably I will use Guile Hoot again. I imagine by then there will be another release and probably some new stuff will be out, so I'll probably use Guile Hoot again to make a browser-based game. I don't know what I'll do yet. Uh, that's that's up to the, uh, the gods, I suppose. But uh, yes, it's a fun event. I participated in the autumn version of this. Um, last year, I made a solitaire game in the browser with Guile Hoot, which is a lot of fun. And I'm uh, looking forward to doing some other cool stuff this time. Probably the, the language will have, or the compiler will have progressed enough that I can do something a little bit more ambitious than just a, a card game that has a very strange uh, 
interaction between JavaScript and Scheme. That's the way it used to be. Uh, Gun says your week number in the date is one week late. It's one, uh, week 13 today, according to ISO 8601. Well, you should tell, uh, uh, what's it called? Waybar. Waybar is probably using some normal uh, string formatting function, date formatting function, and that's what's getting it wrong. So it's not me. I didn't do it. Okay. Let me get back. All right, so that's it. Spring, uh, Spring Loop Game Jam. Join it, enjoy it, have fun, share what you make. Uh, if you participate in the Spring Loop Game Jam and you uh, post your game here, definitely feel free to uh, post it over on the System Crappers forum as well uh, so that other people can check it out. Other news, I don't really know if there's other news happening right now. Uh, anybody have any news that they've heard about this week that's worth bringing up? Hey, Lord Debbie, haven't seen you in a while. Yes, we're ditching evil mode, but let's get into that in a little bit. First, I just need to chat with some folks first. Let's see. Um, let's see. Drishal says, wait, so the title is clickbait? No, it's not clickbait. I'm just making jokes about clickbait. Oh, Brosis says, no IRC today. Sorry for that. Thanks for letting me know. I will restart the chat overlay. Sometimes these things need to happen. Watch this. Blop. Huge little bump on the screen here. Cool. There it is. Now you see yourselves. Uh, Nakotani says, maybe we should just petition to get evil included in the Emacs. I think evil's too big. Uh, Ashra says, one day you'll be 10 minutes early and everyone will think you got hacked. Maybe. Oslo says, are we, are we clickbaiting ironically? No, we're not clickbaiting at all. This clickbait is when you uh, have a title or thumbnail that are misleading and uh, don't actually deliver, the, the video doesn't actually deliver on the premise. In this video, we deliver on the premise because I am actually, I, I have not been using evil for probably four or five days. Let's see. What did, what did Benoit say? I'm missing something, but Benoit said something about the, and the, had the pain pinky back. Let's see, I'm just scanning through the chat. Yes, gun, I'm, that's what I mean. On the, on the PC's top bar, that's way bar. I can't control what the, the week says. Uh, Fade says, remember when David Will announced he was moving to free, free BSD? Well, I was joking about that on April 1st of last year. Actually, wow. Man. So, this is not an April Fool's stream. I just didn't realize how close it was to April 1st that I did this stream. This is completely legitimate uh, news here. I am not joking at all. But that was pretty funny. Uh, I actually almost switched to FreeBSD last year. No joke. Um, it was a joke the first time when I did it on the stream for April Fool's, but... Uh, I installed FreeBSD probably middle of last year, and it was pretty nice. Um, I didn't stick with it because uh, it wasn't easy to get to my employer's websites because they have policy that's locked down so that uh, anything that's not Windows, Mac OS, or Linux can't go to the websites. So FreeBSD is out because of that. Ashra says bonus stream on Monday. Yeah, there's going to be a stream on Monday. It's not an April Fool's joke. I would like to stream some more. I just haven't got that figured out yet. Fade says FreeBSD is a nice uh, system. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Ozloy says, I like 9.99 BSD. You, you got to pay a little bit so you feel more justified in using it. Okay, let me check the YouTube side of the chat. Uh, Brosio says, a part of your system that you don't control? What is this? Do you work for Microsoft? No, I don't. Okay. Back to the YouTube side. Nick says, don't know whether to be frustrated or excited. I'm just working on my own modal editing package for Emacs. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of those and they're, they're all kind of interesting. We might mess with a little bit of um, modal navigation in the stream. We'll see. I want to experiment with a couple of things.
uh, I despise nickname says, AKA how to pepper your files with colons. Yeah, that's certainly the case. I mean, if anything that you, uh, if, if you're trying to switch from evil to vanilla Emacs bindings, you're going to hit a lot of random keys. That's for sure. Hello to Orpheus, Technomog, uh, whatever, one, two, three, Antlers, Marcos, Fab, let's see, um, someone says, oh, Data Mono says, Meow makes more sense. Eh, I tried Meow for a while, it's pretty interesting, but uh, it wasn't worth sticking to sticking with, in my opinion. Lord Devi says, I'm legit curious how one navigates text editors without HJKL. Every time I find myself needing to use arrow keys, I feel quite uncomfortable. Well, that's you don't use arrow keys for vanilla Emacs bindings. You can, but uh, it's better to use control N, control P, control B, control F, which is not great. But uh, surprisingly, you get used to it. Uh, Kolkoskan says, if you're just dishing evil mode, try devil hits the right spot between Vim and Emacs. I think I've seen that one, but I haven't tried it yet. All right. I think I'm caught up on there. <laughs> Gun says on Monday, evil resurrected. That is kind of like a, uh, not such a great thing to do around Easter time. Is it? Rochelle says the timing of the Monday stream will be the same as that of the regular Friday. I'm joking. I'm not streaming on Monday. I don't think I am anyway. You'll have to find out. Uh, Ashra says, will the next stream be an hour earlier or later compared to UTC? Grease switches from... Uh, we already switched, I think. Uh, Grease daylight savings time. I thought it already switched. Maybe it didn't. Oh, hell. Okay, that's why things are off. I thought it had already switched. My wife told me the time changed. I believed her. Uh, and I wondered, how is it that my oven reacted to the time change correctly and I didn't have to change it. I thought that just because we have a new oven that uh, it, it's smart, but apparently it's, it's me being dumb. Gun says, vanilla Emacs bindings require either an ergonomic keyboard or major reconfiguring of keys to avoid RSI. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, I thought it was last Sunday. Ashras. Um, I haven't had any problems yet. Talk to me again in a week or two. With RSI, I mean. Whenever Caps Lock is your control, it's not so bad. Rashal says, is your oven run FOSS software? No, I don't want my food to be ruined. I'm not saying that open source or free software is bad quality, but I am saying I wouldn't trust an oven that had uh, free software firmware. Okay, let's see. Antler says, Devil is really interesting because of its simplicity. You don't need to learn a new key map. Uh, isn't God mode like that? Vanilla chords? Yeah, God mode is like that. Henrik says, uh, Caps should be both caps and escape. Well, I don't really need escape as much anymore. But otherwise, I, I kind of agree with you. Shom says, I'm loving David not being in a corporate job. Doesn't even have to keep track of time, what time it is. Oh, I do have to keep track of what time it is because I have, I have kids. All right, this uh, this white background is just completely blowing out my screen, my face on the screen here. Okay, finally, let's get into the topic. Today, I'm saving myself from evil. Um, I'm actually making a serious attempt to stop using evil mode. Why? Why am I doing this? Uh, a lot of people are wondering. I see a lot of questions in the chat about why I'm dropping evil mode. I like evil mode. I think it's great. I think that. Uh, at least the navigation keys that you know have been sort of standardized by Vim or I guess VI too are very convenient. Doing things on the home row is super convenient. Um, the problem, though, for someone like me who has to switch between my personal Emacs configuration and other under-configured Emacs configurations because I'm demonstrating things and making videos, etc., is that uh, when you get really used to using Evil Mode. Uh, you are basically uh, mentally and physically handicapped whenever you switch to a normal Emacs configuration. Uh, you see me stumbling repeatedly with the key bindings whenever I'm demonstrating something when I don't have evil mode set up in a config. I'm, I'm, I'm hitting uh, escape all the time. I'm you know pressing I and A and W and stuff into buffers. I'm uh, not copying and pasting things using the right keys. Uh, it's really kind of a me problem. It's not really an everyone problem, but I felt like 
it would be worthwhile to try to drop evil mode for a while and see if I could be just as productive without it and also not have uh, RSI, uh, repetitive strain injury, because, you know, whenever you change how you use a keyboard, like you've gotten used to a certain pattern and you are comfortable with it and your hands don't really get sore from working for a long time, if you start changing things, then there, there's a high likelihood that you might start to have hand pain because you're doing things in a different way or maybe you're reaching for keys in a different way, which is definitely the case for me because I have a kind of a weird uh, typing style. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an exper ex can't speak. It's an experiment for me to see if vanilla bindings are good enough. And I'm really trying to stay as close to the inbox key bindings as I can. I could easily go remap all of the control navigation keys to be HJKL like uh, evil mode. But I wanted to give it a fair shot. I keep complaining about control N, control P being up and down because I feel like this a very strange uh, layout for navigation keys. But really what I'm trying to do is not depend on um, directional navigation as much as I used to. Like it's a crutch, I think, using directional navigation whenever you have a tool like Emacs where there's packages like Avi or um, or even just using iSearch to get through a buffer. Like jumping to another place in the buffer should not necessarily require you to just hold the up arrow or hold uh, J and K to go up to the line you're looking for. You should do things in a little bit more of a an efficient way. So uh, there's sort of two things happening here. One is I'm going to use the normal bindings as much as possible. And two, I'm going to try to find the right way to use those bindings and not just do things in a really uh, simplistic way like I've been doing with Vim forever. Now, you're probably wondering, um, like, don't you lose a lot of your editing workflow if you get rid of evil mode uh, bindings and modal editing? Well, for me, not really, because the way that I used modal editing from Vim and evil mode was really stupid. Uh, I did not use all of the uh, motions and selectors and what all the stuff they have, like all the little uh, commands you can use to make things a lot more efficient. If you watch me navigating around a buffer in Emacs with, with evil mode, you'll see that I'm not really the most uh, proficient user of modal editing. So that part is pretty easy for me to drop. I don't really have a problem uh, not having that because I'm just, you know, using arrow keys like a like a caveman, basically. But uh, it's a good opportunity for me to try to completely break my mindset and break all my habits of the way that I navigate buffers so I can rethink how I want to do things. Uh, I don't believe in doing things just for efficiency's sake, but um, I do believe in trying to minimize the damage to your hands and your arms and your shoulders and everything else, your back connected to sitting at a computer and typing. Uh, so doing things more efficiently does actually have a physical aspect to it if you are above the age of, you know, 35, let's say. <laughs> Maybe some of you have had problems with that before 35, but uh, it, is, it is a real thing if you sit at the computer for long enough. I'm sure many of you in the chat can attest to that. So that's basically it. Um, I... I want to give it a shot. I have actually been giving it a shot. Uh, I've been writing a lot this week because I've been writing a lot of content for the Guile course, and uh, it has been going fine. Um, there, I stumble a little bit when I'm, you know, trying to mark regions or you know, cut and paste text or move around in general. But it has been a lot easier and smoother than I expected it to. I have experimented with the vanilla bindings last year a little bit. I mean, I had that stream maybe about a year ago where I was looking at the, the uh, Meow, Boon, and God Mode packages to sort of see maybe which one of those I would switch to if I decided to. I used God Mode for probably a week or two, and it was pretty good. I mean, I, I enjoyed using it. Uh, I used Me Meow also, but Meow was too much like Evil Mode, so um, I didn't really stick with it. But uh, I did have some experience using the normal vanilla key bindings then, so I kind of had a little bit of the stuff baked in. I've been using the, the keys a little bit more. But uh, now I'm really making a, a, a go for it. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about the specific bindings that I'm I'm trying to use these days as we go through the stream. Um, but I, I do want to tweak my configuration a little bit more to uh, remove some of the evil-centric patterns I've been using so far, like uh, buffer switching. I use like some home row style key modifications for uh, moving up and down in the... Um, uh, the Vertico selector list. Uh, also, some of my, some of my Dred bindings are evil style. Uh, some of my org bindings. I don't think I have too many that are like that, but some of them might be. So I might, might want to change those. 
uh, S expression navigation and like Emacs Lisp or Scheme files. I really want to figure out the right way to do that. Um, and it seems it's a lot of these uh, commands for navigating S expressions aren't bound by default or the bindings are kind of obscure. So I, I kind of want to like write down which ones I would I, I would need to use on a regular basis because I want to navigate uh, in Lisp buffers more effectively. That was another place where I was uh, navigating in a really stupid way. Usually I was just using uh, paren matching. Like uh, in Vim, it's uh, shift, what is it? Shift five, the percent sign character to like jump to the matching parenthesis. I was using that a lot for selecting S expressions. I'm also using um, embark a lot more now too, which uh, I'm finding to be really useful. So I'll have a video on uh, using embark and Abby pretty soon, I think. Um, and then smooth, smoother navigation bindings. I was experimenting with repeat mode a little bit to try and make it so that whenever I hit control B or control F or P or N, then uh, whenever I hit one of those bindings, then I should be able to repeat one of the uh, navigation keys without control. So if I could figure that out, that would be pretty cool. I'm sure somebody out there has already figured it out, but I was just trying to, you know, figure it out myself with some of the new features that are in Emacs 29 for the um, the built-in macros for defining key maps, uh, which is a super nice improvement, but it doesn't work exactly the way that I think it should. So we'll have to do a little bit of experimentation there and see if maybe we can improve it. Um, and whatever else we have time for, we'll we'll look into. But that's that's kind of it. That's my rationale for why I wanted to try to use vanilla key bindings instead of evil mode, just to make things more convenient for me, but also to try something new and uh, maybe figure out how to use Emacs a bit more efficiently because, you know, it's a it's a nice tool to learn and master. So why not spend some more time, you know, trying to figure things out? Let's check the chat. All right. Fab says, hi, David. I was thinking of, thinking of dropping evil mode too. Yes, yeah, and it seems like a lot of people were thinking about that recently. I, I recommend it. I think it's a good, good idea. Uh, whatever123 says, this is great news. I learned Emacs from Emacs from Scratch series, but the thing that never got into was evil. You know, um, I've mentioned this so many times, but I would like to redo Emacs from Scratch. Not in the way that I started doing it, like the V2 version I did it last time, but I would like to do just like one end-to-end -end video, maybe like an hour, hour and a half video, where I put together a full Emacs config with all the latest modern stuff that people use because Emacs from scratch, the first one is way out of date now. I'm using like Ivy and Council and things like that. It's, it's way out of date. Um, but if I did that, I might skip evil mode. I don't know if people will be unhappy about that, but I think it's better not to throw new Emacs users into evil mode. That's like an, an optional thing. I might do a separate series on evil mode because I never really covered it very effectively. But uh, anyway, that's something I'm thinking about. Yelner says only one hour. Well, I don't know, like there, there's a bit of a trend with super long uh, videos on YouTube these days. I could do a super long video, but I don't know. I don't know if people would watch it. Okay, let's uh, scroll a little bit. Uh, Jennifer says, for anyone who wants to use default binding, I suggest to use Kanata, Kmonad, and set up home row mods. The game changer, any mods co combination without pain. The thing about doing stuff like that, I mean, it's, it's certainly nice to um, change your key mappings at a higher level so that you're not changing the Emacs mappings. You're changing them at sort of at your desktop environment level. Uh, but I feel like it's um, still problematic. I, Better to be having your mind mapped to what's actually there by default in Emacs, but that's just my opinion. Let's see. Uh, Jack says, you miss Vim's F, vital. Well, it's not really vital for me. I mean, I, I use the F, but uh, not, not as much as you might think. Uh, iSearch actually could do just as well on that. Also, Avi, um, which is not built in, but it's good. It, it can also help with that. Uh, let's see. Amy says, I'm pretty satisfied with my fork of Obj-Ed to reduce RSI, but I'm here to see what else is out there. Yeah, we might not see much of what is like out there today. I'm trying to stay more in the box for now. Did the chat just jump? Ah, uh, Data Mono, it says, uh, Soding programs with vanilla and it works for him. Well, Soding is, you know, kind of like hardcore, so doesn't surprise me. 
not that using vanilla key bindings is hardcore, but you know, some people they use Emacs without it being very configured at all. So, you know, that I would I consider that to be a bit more uh hardcore. Uh Ramus says, I hated Emacs until I saw Emacs from scratch. Well, that's cool. Let's see, what else am I seeing here? Uh, Alabanzai says, uh, I only ever bother with default bindings. If you frequently log into a lot of different machines with no personal config, it's easier. Yeah, that's sort of the, the problem that I have is that I'm using different Emacs configs and it's better just not to have to deal with another layer of, of bindings. Fab says, short vids are easier to digest IMO. There's a place for long vids though. Yeah, I'm always struggling between uh, the two, but have I ever made a short video? I made one YouTube short like two years ago and that's the shortest video I ever made, but that took a lot of effort. For me, I'm just very long-winded, so it's easy for me to make super long videos. Um, I don't know. I, I always find that I can just write more rather than less. That's not a good thing, though. I would like to improve the way that I produce uh, videos and content. Okay, back to the IRC side. Gun says, Emacs from scratch based on crafted Emacs. It won't really be from scratch then. Uh, Fade says, par edit is critical to my workflow. I would like to get better at using par edit, but uh, every time I start using it, it doesn't really uh, stick, but I haven't tried very hard. I think these days I need to. Uh, yeah, I heard about Kanata um, this week. I don't know who was talking about it in the System Crafters IRC, but uh, if you haven't seen, uh, is it Shome.dev? Yeah, Shome wrote an article about, oh, is it not here? Shome, where's your article about... Uh, Let's see, forum.systemcrafters.net. Shown wrote an article about this uh, Kanata program. Is that what it's called, Kanata? Yeah. Okay, weird. Anyway, there's an article there. You can find it on the System Crafters forum. Ashraz uh, is giving a list of packages he uses by default. Uh, I actually don't use which key anymore. Um, if you use Embark, you don't need which key because let's see, uh, Control X, Control H. I have this. Oh wow, that's not the, what I expected. Control C, Control H. Hmm, interesting. Maybe my bindings are broken. Um, my Embark setup actually has a thing where I can get a completion list for all the keys that are under a given prefix, which I find to be a lot better than which key. So, Shom says, not a comment on anyone's choice, but focusing with not customizing is an ironic take for system crafters. I would never say don't customize Emacs. I mean, it's kind of annoying by default, but the key bindings, I mean, you know. Ashra says, if you only had a package that shows you the bindings. Well, we do because we saw it. Because control H in a, in a prefix works by default. Let's see. Uh, Fade says, it's also nice because the GNU user land pretty much obeys Emacs binds by default. That's true. If you uh, go into bash, let's see, vterm, oh, is this going to work? Uh, do I have foot? Do I have alacrity? Okay. So blah, 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 blah. If I press control A, okay. I, it would work if my prompt wasn't completely busted, but control A, control E, they go to the beginning and end of the line, control B, control F, like the Emacs key bindings, control K, they, they work in the bash, uh, read line by default. So it is useful if you learn the Emacs key bindings because they work in other places. Even I, I think Mac OS. You could turn on Emacs key bindings for text fields, if I'm not mistaken. Shom says, my poor web design failed me when I got that system crappers bump. Maybe there's a start section on your site that's not linked somewhere, but I, I didn't expect it to be there. I thought it would just be like an, an article in your listing. Gun says, Bash and Z Shell support uh, VI and Emacs bindings. I didn't know that Bash supported uh, VI. Z Shell, for sure. Uh, uh, Leroy says, which key is being added to the core? Hmm. That's cool. I mean, it's good. Which key is a package that can make things really useful for beginners to figure out, uh, key maps. So I, uh, I welcome that change. 
Uh, Lord Devi says, bash support for VI is really good too. I love it. Uh, Tim Heaney says, and you can use read line in your own programs. Then both Emacs and VI users are happy. That is cool. Uh, Tree Blast says, I use Emacs key bindings for GitHub comments and general text areas all the time. Super useful uh, feature of learning vanilla key bindings. Yes. Jack says, I totally respect the effort to customize the right amount rather than installing a package for every minor desire. Yeah, I think that um, there's two things happening. Um, there's been a more of a trend of there being Emacs packages that are written in a way that try to integrate better with the default functionality of Emacs. But at the same time, there's been a lot of improvements to what's in the box in Emacs to make those other customizations work better. I think, uh, you know, Minad has been doing contributions to Emacs core, or maybe even Prot has been doing some contributions to Emacs core um, and others as well. So uh, I feel like the situation in Emacs, like the overall quality of the inbox uh, packages is improving, especially we got like use package inbox now. So as time goes on, it, I think we will need less community packages. Uh, more and more of them are actually being added to GNU Elpa as well, which means that all those packages are copyright assigned to the Free Software Foundation, meaning that they could be pulled into Emacs by default if uh, anybody ever decided to. So uh, I guess the problem is you just need to uh, come to an agreement with Richard Stallman on what the uh, practical mundane name for such a package would be. Like denote probably can't be denote. It might need to be... Um, uh, Specific file name note taking tool or something of that nature. QQQQQQQ says escape is banned. Did you see that? Escape is banned. Yes, I had to put in a key binding to tell myself not to use escape because that's like that's like smoking cigarettes for me. Hitting escape is my stress release. And uh, if you don't use evil, then you can't be hitting escape all day because escape means something in Emacs key binding. So I had to make sure I don't do that. All right. Uh, Master Roman says, I haven't connected to IRC so long that I was unaware that there's a live channel now. Yeah, we've been changing things up a little bit. Uh, Nakotani says, I'm a control G spam enjoyer myself. Yeah, I, I do about equal duty on control G spamming and escape spamming. Ashra says, instead of escape is banned, have it close Emacs. No, I got to get work done, dude. I can't be doing that. I'm surprised my escape or my control G, or I guess my escape or G keys haven't been completely worn out on my keyboards because, you know, I kind of slam them a little bit too much. All right. Cool. Oh, we got uh, 124 people in the YouTube stream. That's probably the most we've had in two years, two and a half years. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, get into the actual configuration. I, I don't know if everything is set up the correct way on uh, this this machine because this is not my normal day-to-day -day machine. I had to move some of the config over here earlier today, so some stuff might be broken. I might have to like sync some things from my um, my other machine. But the important thing is that uh, dot files emacs and knit. Um, I had already broken all of my configuration up into individual modules. So getting rid of uh, evil mode was pretty much just as easy as just commenting out my DW keys evil um, binding. And let me turn on uh, keycast mode as well. So that was pretty easy. I don't really have to worry too much about uh, extracting all of the uh, stuff that I did, but there's still other things that are in my configuration that I need to massage a little bit to get the evilness out. I have to expunge the evil. I have to do an exorcism on my configuration to get all the evil out so that I can live with the holiness of vanilla Emacs key bindings. You like that? So um, then you can see my little global set key here to uh, remind myself that I should not be hitting escape all day and you know ding the visual bell and tell myself that escape is banned. Uh, I also have some modules with that have a uh, God and Meow configurations. I don't think I'll turn those back on yet, but uh, it's, it's good enough for now. Uh, so let's see. I actually do want to go into my evil config and see if I'm missing anything. Um, one thing that I had to do that was kind of annoying with my evil, evil config was that because I wanted to use control, control D, control U as the page up, page down keys, because that's what they are in uh, them. Um, 
because I'm rebinding control U to page up, I had to bind the universal argument command to control uh, alt U or control meta U, which is um, a little inconvenient. It kind of makes using the prefix key situation uh, less smooth, but I've never really been a huge user of prefix keys. I'm actually curious, like how many people use the universal argument or the numeric prefix keys for key bindings, because there's a lot of commands that support them, but I personally have almost never used them. Sometimes there will be like an interactive command that has an alternate behavior if you use control U first, but not, not, not too often do I, do I actually use that. Um, undo tree. I might need to put undo tree back. I don't know how well undo tree works without um, evil mode, but I'm guessing it's separate. Uh, the default undo behavior in Emacs is kind of weird. It uh, To redo something, you have to undo your undo. Um, I'm, I'm sticking with it for now. I'll just see if I can get used to it, but it is strange compared to what you might be used to. Uh, there are people who swear by it, but uh, it is different for people who are used to more of the Vim style of undo, where uh, U and R, I think, are uh, taking care of undo and redo, and they work correctly. But um, I don't know. L let me just make some notes here. Might need to uh, move this to standard config. All right. Um, evil config. Let's see, I don't have a good solution for uh, page up, page down either right now. So I might need to figure out a good uh, set of key bindings for that. Uh, there may be something for that. I know that control L can sort of move the point around, or I guess the scroll around that the where the point is in the buffer. But for me, that's not enough. I kind of need to be able to go up and down. Uh, however, using page up and page down does feel a little bit like a crutch too. So maybe I shouldn't try to depend on that. Okay, um, activating evil mode. I don't have to worry about setting default Emacs states on, on modes anymore, which is really nice because that is a pain sometimes. You know, some some modes like um, like a Telega, the Telegram client in Emacs, or maybe like an IRC client, maybe sometimes you don't want those to be in normal state uh, to start with. You want them to be uh, in insert mode or Emacs state or something. So I don't have to deal with that anymore, which is good. Uh, let's see, visual line motions, I have to deal with that. Uh, I had set it up so that um, it would tell me don't use arrow keys to use HJKL. That was way back when I was trying to get better at using HJKL. Uh, now you can see up here, it's tattling on me. I'm using up and down arrow to go around in the buffer. So I should be using control N, control P. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I'm not going to add that back either. Evil collection, that's a huge thing that I don't need anymore. Um, and that's kind of one of the big problems with using evil mode. You've probably heard this if you use evil mode at all or considered using evil mode, but when you decide to use evil mode, um, many Emacs packages, especially community packages, have default key bindings that sort of assume the navigation key style of vanilla Emacs. So like Magit or, um, I don't know, anything that has more of a comp complex interface, like, you know, mail clients, IRC clients, etc. So you need to install this evil collection package to uh, pull in a community curated set of key binding remaps, basically, for all these various packages to have a, a key binding setup that is consistent with evil mode. So not using evil mode means I don't have to deal with that at all. But I do have to relearn how to use the key bindings for various packages that I use. Um, the one package where that is the most dangerous is Magit, because if you press the wrong keys, uh, then you could lose files or do something completely unexpected. So I've had to be very careful in Magit this week not to accidentally discard files or, or changes that I want to keep. Uh, Hector says, did he say why he's removing evil? I just want to try uh, not using uh, modal editing. I want to use the inbox keys for various reasons. Evil org, obviously not needed if I'm not going to use evil in uh, org buffers. Um, there's a few different bindings that I have here that I set up for myself um, to move between headings. I think there might be keys for that already for org mode with the normal motion bindings but this meta up meta down i kind of need to have that set up somewhere so 
Let's see, can I, hmm, what's the best way to deal with this? If I go to DW keys, maybe I can make a little list here of things I need to add. Uh, org, meta up, meta down, or I think this is for moving uh, headings and items around. Because that actually is uh, something I do quite a lot in org buffers. I use key bindings to move things around and there are keys for that, I think, but they're not what I expect them to be. And they shouldn't be meta J, meta K either. I think meta N, meta P might work. And uh, also, I think I had something for EXWM, but I don't use EXWM anymore, so. So that's it for the evil config part. However, there's other packages that I have that um, have some uh, evil influence. Uh, the first one that I know of for sure is my Vertico key bindings. So if I go to DW, is it interface maybe? Yeah. So I have uh, control J and control K set up to be Vertico next and previous. So when I go into a um, uh, buffer switch buffer, or if, even if I use like uh, control X, control F to do find file, I can use control J, control K. It's not so bad to keep that there. I don't know if I'm missing anything by having those uh, buttons bound to be more like Vim. It's, it's kind of convenient because my binding to get to switch buffer, the one that I use all day long is control alt J. You can see up here, control meta J to go to console buffer. And then um, when I hit control alt J, then I can just start, start hitting J with control to go up and down. Maybe I should keep that. Uh, but I have actually gotten used to this week using Control N, Control P to go through this list. So I don't know. Um, I could go either way on that. But, you know, maybe to be uh, a more faithful um, user of the uh, the holy vanilla key bindings, uh, I should probably not use those. But we'll see if, if I end up having major issues. Marek says, why are we doing it? This is why people should watch the beginning of the stream. I can't explain the same thing five times. Um, all right. I know the stream is live. People can't be here when the stream starts. So you'll just have to live in suspense. Uh, Peter says, I think meta in meta P is your former so sought page up, page down. I don't think it is, though. Uh, is it? No, you can't use meta p, meta in in normal buffers. So um, there are commands for scrolling, scroll up, scroll down. That's not exactly what I want. I thought there were page commands. Oh, yes, forward page, backward page, control X and the um, square brackets. Do those have repeat mode now? Control X. Oh, yes. OK, that's pretty awesome, actually. So let me go into a longer file so that we can see that uh, more clearly. So DW core. So apparently if you use control X and then one of the square bracket keys, whoa, what the hell? Okay, that's not a page. I think the uh, page up page down actually expects you to insert a page character. Control V meta V Oh, control V. Ah, what is this? Scroll up command. Thank you to uh, Domsec that says use control V meta V. However, I think meta V is not a good. Um, like having to, to flip between control and meta to press the same letter key feels really weird. Like, I think that would be some RSI stuff if you had to go up and down. Maybe you don't. I don't know. Uh, whatever one, two, three says uh, the page commands, I think, relate with the uh, uh, control L character. Yes, they do, which is kind of weird. Uh, Rubik says, do you support trans rights? Yes, of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so Ashra is reminding people in the chat. If you want to see your message also in the stream, you should go to, uh, the systemcrafters.net slash live page or join the systemcrafters dash live, uh, channel on, uh, Libra chat. All right. So let me check the IRC because I've been ignoring it. Trev says 125,000 viewers. Nice. Yeah, it would be nice if it was 125,000. But I think it would be kind of uh, insane as well. You would just have uh, 
Pepe emojis the whole time. Or whatever people like to do on Twitch. I don't know. I'm not a Zoomer. Let's see. Uh, Ashra says, escape is banned. Coffee mug win, you know? I like uh, I like these ideas. I need to be doing some of these things. <laughs> Gun says, define an e-list function. DW remote remove evil debris. Uh, Master Roman says, I ditched Telegram on purpose, but now I'm uh, missing a family-friendly chat client in Emacs. I wish Signal had a proper client. Uh, it would be great if XMPP was the solution, but it's not even... It's still not there yet, even though it's so old. Um, the clients are sort of better on mobile these days, but... The quality of the sort of proprietary chat services or IM services is so much better than what XMPP gives. I mean, you have to put like a lot of the, what do they call them? Anyway, the, the extension protocols for the, the, the protocol itself, uh, you have to have a lot of them set up in your server and they're not equally implemented across all clients and servers. So it's a little bit uh, difficult to use XMPP for that, but that would be ideal. However, I don't really like the Jabber.el client uh, it feels a little bit crusty to me, uh, the one that's in Emacs. So yeah, Telega is like, uh, what do they call that? I don't remember. There's, there's a phrase for that, but I'm blanking now because uh, I've been uh, talking and typing all day. Borussia says, I would bet that Magit is a big player in David Will's situation. Well, it's definitely a, a major part of my workflow. Ashra says Vertigo Next and Vertigo Previous are bound to error keys by default. No way. I'm not using that. Hello to Peter in the IRC. Treff says viewers are dropping. Start deleting code quick. Ah, that's enough. I've deleted enough. Joining old Google? What? I don't know what you're talking about, Osloy. You've been here the whole time. I think you're joking. Peter says, I just tried turning off evil mode. Ouch, respect. It is, uh, it's not that bad. I mean, it just takes a little bit of fortitude for the first day. It's not too bad. Uh, Borussia says, there are many things I envy from evil mode, like visual line, join line, yank line, etc. Um... Join line, I mean, there is a solution for that in um, in the vanilla bindings, which is control K. It's not the same. And if you press control K and you press control K again, it will delete everything else after. So it's not exactly the same as join line. Uh, is there a join line? Yeah, there is a join line uh, command that's not bound. So you could technically speaking. Oh, wait, did that hold on? It goes up. What if I use control U, uh, join line? Okay, so you have to use control U. You kind of want to invert the behavior to be more like what's in uh, Vim or evil mode. So it's not exactly the same thing. Ah, joining old Google is in reference to you getting rid of evil and Google's old motto being don't be evil. Yeah, they, they haven't lived by that in a long time. Okay, so uh, what else? I'm already here in the core file, which is kind of like the dumping ground for the basic parts of my configuration. My organization is not very good. You should look at my configuration as a um, an example for a good config. It's just, you know, me screwing around and then not touching the config for probably six months because I'm off doing other things. Uh, let's see, anything evil related in this file? Evil nerd commenter. Well, that's not very evil. It's just more of a... Um, package that does a uh, line commenting, which is pretty useful. I don't even know if I use it that much. Like, what do I use? Hmm. Okay. I think I'm using alt 
semicolon most of the time, but maybe, maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let's see, what else? Winner. I'm setting something in the evil window map. Uh, it's not really that important to take that out. I'm just adding winner undo to the evil window map. Is winner in... Let's see. No, there's no winner bindings by default in the control... X uh, key map. And not in control X W either. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Okay. I need to fix some bindings here. Winner undo. Was it return? Yeah. I'm looking for the default bindings. Winner mode map. Do I actually have that set up? Control C left. Huh. Does winner automatically set up things in the control C mappings? There's winner undo, winner redo. Okay, that's the only two. That's not too bad. Uh, Marek says, uh, good luck, but as a, uh, both NeoVim and, and Emacs user, evil mode is the only option. Well, I'm not saying people shouldn't use evil mode. Let's, let's get that clear. I'm not suggesting that people not use evil mode. I'm just, I'm, the stream is about, about me making a change to my configuration and just talking through the reasoning and just, you know, doing some config tweaks. So don't get the impression that I'm saying everybody should quit using evil mode because I'm not saying that. It's, it's certainly very useful and I like it but I'm trying to kick a habit that I feel like is getting in the way of me being productive in other ways, so. It's like uh, eating cookies every day after lunch. I shouldn't do that either. It's not really equivalent. Okay, so uh, let's get back to it. Anything else evil related in here? Uh, let's see, the co-pilot crap that I disabled. Ah, yes, the Dear Ed keys. So I do use certain key bindings. Ooh, Steph and Monty are mentioned me on uh, Mastodon. I wonder why. Why? <laughs> Stefan, you should watch the stream. Okay. Um, so in DRED, I had gotten really used to a key binding setup where um, the HJKL keys would go up and down directories. And for me, that's super um, efficient because I'm using HJKL all the time for uh, navigation around. So if I were to open up, uh, ooh, so the K is not working because evil collection is not on. Uh, H and L do work because I bound those myself, but I can't press K to go down. I have to press control N to go down. So I really do need to fix the um, inconsistency here in the direct key bindings. Um, what do people normally use for going into tree down, go down in the direct tree control M D. Is that right? What was the, uh, Let's see, DRED single up directory. Okay, so I'm using DRED single. I don't know if I need to use that anymore. I think there's a setting for that. So DRED uh, reuse. What was the DRED um, binding for that? Sorry, there's a, a setting to reuse DRED buffers. I think it got added in 28 or 29. Hmm. I'm not going to keep searching through this list. Buffer. Clean up buffers too. Kill buffers visiting files. Uh, that's not exactly it, is it? Down as an inner directory, then ret. Yeah, return, maybe. Kill when opening. Okay, here, look. Is that it? If non-nil, kill the current buffer when selecting a new directory. Yeah, it's added in Emacs 28.1. I could probably get rid of Dear Ed Single just with that uh, same with a setting. So I might try that actually, just to clean up my DRA config a little bit because it is kind of messy. 
Okay, so Deered single up directory. Let's get rid of that. Um, Deered omit mode. I like that. I don't know if there's another binding for this though by default. So let's take a look at uh, this command and see. You see me moving my mouse here because I'm uh, I'm using it as a crutch. Okay, uh, what was that? Control X meta O. Hmm. I guess omit makes sense. Control X meta O. I kind of like capital H better. I don't know if there's a binding for capital H, capital H already by default in uh, in Dered. Let's see. Find a. Let's see. Can I bind this anyway? Because I'm kind of used to using it. Um, single buffer L is to go into the uh, the directory, so I need to use either return, which I don't really like reaching over to press return, but uh, maybe Control J works for that because control J is kind of equivalent to return. Um, and if we're not using Dirad single buffer, then what is the normal command? I need to not bind these things so I can figure it out. Or just go into a Dirad buffer and use control, uh, well, what would it be? Control HM. See, find file directory in another window. Uh, return to find the current lines file or derate in another buffer if it's a directory. So return is whatever it is. Control H K return is derate find file. Visit the file directory name on this line. Okay. And is there another binding for that? Dered mode map E to F. What does this mean for a key binding? Can I press F? Whoa, F, is that right? So uh, I think up is the caret key. If I go up a couple keys and press F, what went in the directory? I mean, F would be pretty good if it's actually set up right. I kind of need to take all this extra stuff out though to make sure that I'm not getting any um, bindings coming from unexpected places. I don't know what Dered X is doing. In fact, I don't even know what um, Oh, Dered omit mode is coming from Dered X. That's fine. I don't think I'm actually loading that. Or anything else from it. Okay. Let's set the setting. Dered, what was it? Uh, helpful. Dered kill when opening new Dered buffer. All right. Kill when opening new Dered buffer. True. Let's do that. Uh, Direct collapse. What is that for? Collapse unique nested paths in direct Direct listing. I don't even know what I was using that for. Uh, let's see. Direct mode hook. I have a Direct mode hook. Uh, high details mode. Uh, oh, I turn off all the icons mode. Do I even? Wait, what? Oh, that's an unless. Okay, yeah, makes sense. And then highlight line mode. Okay, it makes sense. Uh, super E is bound to Dira jump. That's fine. Uh, the ranger stuff, I might have to rebind or figure out the right way to do that. And then if feature P evil, so this doesn't get executed unless evil is turned on. So I think that, oh, wait. So why? Why is this actually? Oh, it's because evil is installed. It's not because it's loaded. I think that that's not the right check. I should have been checking uh, the variable evil mode to see if it's one, I think. So this actually, I'm setting bindings that I did, I did not intend to. Evil mode. So if evil mode. That should be sufficient, I think. Then, uh, whoa. I hit tab and it did that. That should keep all these bindings from being bound whenever I restart Emacs. So I might restart Emacs in a second just to get a clean slate. Eh. Let's just redo what I did. Okay. Uh, Dear Ed Rainbow, there's nothing there. Uh, anything else evil related in here? I think that was it. It's the Dear Ed stuff. So I would like to figure out the D Dear Ed situation. Uh, let's see. Gun says WKY should be the Emacs keys. Is that... Uh, 
Do you think they're set up by default? It might be the case. I'd be really happy to find out that uh, those keys are bound by the DRED package. Let's kill Emacs. You know, if I when I kill Emacs, two things are going to happen. Uh, the stream chat will stop and the music will stop. Hmm. I didn't consider that possibility. All right, let me check uh, the YouTube chat real quick. Mastering Life says, hello and thank you, David. Uh, because of you, I'm implementing an awesome workflow, working on my own config and org babble for a couple of days, and I've seen most of your vids. That's great. Tim says, does anyone here use a foot switch? I've often, often thought it would be good for control. Um, you know, it probably would be useful, but I really don't want to get dependent on something that I can't have with me with a laptop because I do go places and use my laptop a lot. So for me, my workflow has to be extremely work, uh, laptop compatible. And that's the reason why a lot of my stuff is full screen Emacs frames or full screen browser frames. Um, and when I have my laptop docked, it just moves some of the workspaces to another screen so that I can see the you know, multiple workspaces at the same time, but it's the same workflow, the same window layout on uh, laptop and uh, desk. Rubix is saying, uh, what Emacs theme are you using here? I am using uh, Doom Pale Knight. Okay. Let's see, where are we at? Run Emacs as a new instance. I I need to check. Uh, Master Roman says multitasking is a myth. I find full screen to be the best for focused. I don't want to see multiple windows open except for Emacs windows, obviously, um, on the same screen because it just takes up too much space. And I do most things in Emacs anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm switching between a full screen browser and a full screen Emacs all day long, effectively. I don't use other programs. I don't like use a terminal terminal emulator outside of Emacs or anything like that. So technically speaking, I am using multiple windows, some arrangement sometimes. I split windows sometimes, but uh, it's usually very minimal. It, oftentimes it's like a buffer here and something up here uh, in the pop-up area at the bottom, like I'm running MX compile or uh, have like an eShell buffer or something like that. But uh, normally I don't have multiple windows open, even in Emacs. Okay. Uh, yeah, Alternate Vet says, just run Emacs as a new instance. It it complains because of um, server start. Uh, did I not do that? Hmm. Interesting. When did I comment that out? <laughs> okay, I guess I can do that. Let's try it. We'll just run a new Emacs instance so we don't disturb the old one. Uh, symbol, okay, cool. In DRED, uh, yeah, okay. I need to check if evil mode is bound before I try to reach in there. So, uh, dot files, Emacs, uh, modules core, evil mode, and uh, F bound P. It's not F bound P, is it? I guess it could be F bound P. It's bound P. Bound P for evil mode? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. What just happened? Here we go. Okay, so invalid re read syntax? Yes, yeah, because I got a stupid uh, single quote there. Nil. Okay. There we go. So if, uh, hey, what the hell? Is that lispy? Man, get that out of here. Um, modules DW dev, I think that's in. I got to get Lispy out. Lispy is, uh, I don't use it at all in my uh, main configuration. And it's really causing me trouble now. So let's, whenever I use this computer. Disabled T, is that right? Diabled. Okay, uh, this needs to be bound P also. Uh, yes. There might be a better, uh, jeez. Yeah, this is not going well. Lispy mode. 
get that out of here. Uh, and bound P evil, uh, evil mode. Okay, disable T. Cool, we need to get the Lispy out of there. So, what was I doing uh, before that digression? Yeah, I was making this work. Lispy mode, get out of here. Okay, there we go. Cool. If bound P, evil mode, and evil mode. If you know what bound P is, it just checks to see if a uh, particular symbol has been bound, meaning that there's a variable defined for that. And if we look at control H, F, it says return T if a symbol's value is not void, which I guess means it's bound. <laughs> Master Roman says, imagine using Vim with Emacs bindings. That would be pretty funny. I'm sure someone has tried it. And then, then the question becomes, why? Okay. Uh, do we have... Okay. Yeah, it looks right. So let's restart Emacs again just to get another um, clean slate. Uh, purge DRED Ranger. DRED Ranger actually is useful for uh, copying files around. However, ah, Amy has the right solution. Bound and true P, yes. That's the one I, I probably should be using. Uh, bound and true, yeah, of course. Return the value of symbol var if it is bound, else nil. Okay. What was I saying? Okay, so that did seem to work. That files, emacs, modules, core, uh, bound, p. Looks like I'm using it elsewhere too. So what was it? Uh, bound and true P. Okay, and I can get rid of uh, this part. Look at me doing the wrong thing here. Let me use the actual key bindings that I said I'm using because I'm <laughs> I'm using weird stuff as a crutch right now. Hey, don't do that. Okay, so uh, Alt D, Control D, uh, Control B, Control D. Okay, oops. Not that. Control J is a uh, new line by default. Control N, Control K. Cool. Now I think that is going to work. If I go Control E to go to the end of the line, Control X E, uh, wrong argument type symbol P. Do I actually need to put evil mode at not a symbol? Is this a macro? Okay, it's a macro. Fine. That's better. I don't like having to use the uh, single quote. All right. So, um, now, the question becomes, if I go into Dear Ed, do these things work the way I want them to? If I use uh, caret to go up one directory, uh, control N, or can I use N and P? Oh, wait, what? Okay, so N goes down. P does something different. I think I did that. So maybe by default, N and P actually do work. Is there a way to check that? What is it, the uh, Dear Ed mode map? Uh, let's see, control HV, dear ed mode map. Uh, let's see here. It doesn't tell me who set them, but I'm guessing that, um, forward, what? Line? Dear ed, uh, next line, previous line. Okay, do kill lines in is next line. I think I screwed up the uh, control P binding with my... But what is it bound to? Hold on. Dear Ed Ranger paste. But the question is why? I thought I had that stuff turned off. Dear, whoop. Dear Ed Ranger. What's this thing doing in here? Because that should not be running. Oh, I'm still doing it. I'm just using evil collection to find key. All right. Bad, bad me. All right, so uh, let's move forward here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. Oh, let's turn on um, KeyCast as well. So I want to take out all these lines. Yeah, that wasn't right. I mean, the whole form should go away, but I, I don't know which one of these I want to get rid of to start with. So we don't want Dear Ed Ranger Pace. It looks like N and P can be used in Dear Ed, which I think is perfectly acceptable. Um, going up and down directories, though, 
Do we still have that Dured uh, mode map pulled up? Um, up, Dured tree up. So control meta U, that's not that bad. But is that right though? Up directory seems like the right thing. What does uh, control alt U do? Cannot go up, not in this tree. Oh, you mean, is it the thing where it like inserts the, the tree in there? Amy says control HC, what's that? Oh, describe the following key, mouse click or menu item, yeah. Cthulhu says, Memo to self, avoid evil mode at all costs. It's like a nasty fungal infection. Eh, I mean, don't look at my configuration and consider it uh, an example of a configuration that should have been organized correctly. I've got a bunch of stuff just, you know, splayed all over the place. I know I'm the guy that, that's, you know, trying to teach people how to configure Emacs, but uh, when it comes to my own Emacs, I'm not really spending much time on it. Because I just, you know, get things working and then move on. Okay, um, so we're not binding those keys anymore. I guess carrot is fine. I don't really like that so much as a binding. It would be nice if B and F were bound. What about that? If I go here and search for, uh, let's see, B. So it looks like B is not bound. I could, I could use B for back. What about F? Lowercase F does not seem to be bound either. Is that right though? Is this a consult line? Yeah. So there's no B and F like back and forward. I would use that, but that does take me away from the built-in binding. So maybe I should just get used to it. I'm trying to just, you know, accept the situation as it is as much as possible. Master Roman says, uh, mechanics car is always broken. A saying we have in Croatia. Yes. It is kind of like that. Uh, Mastering Life says, when are you making more videos for geeks? And did you ever try Gen 2? I used to use Gen 2 for a few years back in the early 2000s. Um, more videos for geeks. That's coming for sure. It needs to happen. There's a lot that I have not said about geeks positive things. So next line, uh, gun says previous next, you'll need forward and back when you open dear ed in edit mode, uh, but not F and B though. But you mean like uh, control X control Q, like the read only mode that lets you rename files. Okay. So yeah, we can just get rid of this. I think that if I ever went back to evil, I should probably just stick to the uh, built-in bindings anyway. Uh, the Dear Ed Ranger stuff, I am using those things. I do move files around a lot using these bindings for Y, X, and P. Um, but I would like to not use Dear Ed Ranger at all if I can figure out the right ways to do that with uh, built-in Dear because I'm sure there is a way to do that. Um, I think the problem was that when you mark files for copying, there's not a way to mark stuff and then go to another DRED buffer and then paste them. And I think DRED Ranger holds some state in the package that keeps track of which files were marked previously, but I think DRED by default may not do that. I could be wrong about that though. Um, I think usually with DRED, uh, you're supposed to use something like DRED copy, or is there like a move or is this rename? Rename. Rename current file or all marked files. So how does do rename work whenever you have multiple files marked? I don't want to test that right now because I'll break something. Ah, uh, Gun says open two DRED buffers side by side and use R. I wonder if that works with what I just did though. So, um, modules. This uh, single buffer thing for Dear Ed seems to be working. I wonder if I can split the window though. Can I uh, split the window vertically and then go into the modules buffer? So if I use uh, control, what, what was it? F? Ah, okay. So 
it's smart enough to do that. Uh, Deer Ed Ranger with um, Deer Ed single turned on did not work like this. It would always, in the in two different windows, the same buffer would be shown in both windows if you try to navigate around, and it was really annoying. So it's cool that they fixed this in uh, built-in Deer Ed. That's a major improvement. So uh, open two Deer Ed buffer side by side and use capital R. Let's see. I mean, I'll move uh, two files here. So if I go up here and uh, mark these two files and do uh, capital R. Move two files to Emacs D. Mm, that's not where I wanted them to go. Hmm. No. Asynchronously. Uh, okay, dear Ed, rename. Do rename. What does a doc say on that? Rename current file or all marked files. Uh, let's see. Default is suggested for the target directory depends on the value of dear Ed Dwim target. Maybe that actually is what needs to be set correctly. Uh, if non-nil, dear Ed tries to guess a default target directory. If there's a dear Ed buffer displayed in some window, use its current directory instead of this dear Ed buffer's current directory. I think that's what's needed. It needs to be turned on. Prefer either the next window with a dear Ed buffer or the most recently used window with a dear Ed buffer. Hmm. That's probably the right thing, but how many how many windows do you have open with Dirad buffers, I wonder? When the value is a function, it will be called with no arguments and expected to return a list of directories which will be used as defaults. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so I what do I want to do? What are the possible values? Um Target next, target next visible. For next windows on the same frame, most recently used windows. Probably target next is the safest option. Is that the one I need? Look at me using the mouse. Okay, so if I go back to my DW core file and the DRA config, I can go up to uh, this point here. What was it called? DRED uh, DWIM target. Is that right? Okay, so if I go back to Deer Ed, and then over in this window, if I go back to, uh, what was it? I think it was reverse, right? Um, modules here. Then in the other window, I go back to the emacs.d folder, and I have two files marked there. If I do cap R, then it picks modules. Okay, so that, that did work uh, correctly. If I bounce to the other window and find those files, um, what was it? Uh, Tangle.files. Oh, they're still marked. Cap R. I can move them back. Okay. That's not bad. When you have one buffer open, go to a display directory and, and hit Shift Enter to open a new, new Deer Ed window. Shift Enter. Okay. It didn't actually work exactly right. Maybe there's a binding I don't have for that. Or setting. Seems to be the case. Uh, Mastering Life says, can Geeks work with source files? Do you mean, can it build from source? Yes. If you don't have substitute servers set up with Geeks, everything will be built from source like Gentoo. Let's see. Uh, I don't recommend it though, because in Geeks, it will literally try to bootstrap the entire operating system from like the lowest levels of everything. And you will be building your system for probably four or five days. So... Probably not the best idea. Uh, oh, Gun says you have, I have one open already. Let me close this out then. If I uh, close that window and then go up one level and use shift enter, it still doesn't do it for me. What about uh, control U enter? No, that didn't do it either. All right, so that's pretty useful. And you're probably wondering, why are you spending so much time on Deer Ed? Well, Deer Ed was one of the things that I really had a lot of evil style stuff set up that was too custom, and it would be nice to get rid of it. I don't even know what this Deer Ed Collapse does. Um, 
what else is in Dear Ed Load Hook? Uh, wait, which Emacs am I in? Okay, that's the right one. Um, okay, Dear Ed Load Hook. It's only my stuff. I can get rid of that. So what if I um, comment this out? Okay, there we go. Uh, comment that out and then set Q uh dred load hook to nil so it doesn't get run again if i go back to a dred buffer let's kill it first okay so i don't i don't see anything different i don't know what i had done with dred collapse i don't know why it was necessary dred collapse mode is nil so it has not been run uh, Dear Ed, find file other windows map to O. Okay, that actually is true. I did see that. So um, let me go to Lisp. Uh, if I go up a little bit, press O. Cool, that does work. So O is good. It's a good binding. Set Q, why not set opt? I don't need set opt for that. I'm just, I'm just setting it uh, really quickly. Shom says, I can't use evil because which Emacs am I in is a regular question for him. Oh, yes. I can't use evil because I have to use different Emacs's, different Emacs configurations, and I have a real hard time mapping my brain between them. Okay. Um, cool. So let's just get rid of some crap that I don't need in this configuration. How about that? Uh, let's get rid of that part. I'll get rid of this whole thing here, too, because I don't really need any of that. Uh, this uh, super E binding that I have, I actually do use that, but I would prefer not to. I believe that there is a default dear ed jump binding. Is it uh, control H? Sorry, control X, control J? No. Control X, J? No. Control X, control H. Uh, jump. Dear Ed, jump other window. Yuck, that's a terrible binding. I could have swore there was a binding for uh, control X, J, or control X, control J. Apparently there is one for that. Oh, that's the jabber package. Fine. So, uh, I think I would probably just change that to use control X, J, but, you know, it's nice. It would be nice if Dear Ed, jump had a, um, binding already. Let me... <laughs> Shoem says, I love that the color for log files is poop brown. Yeah, you, you definitely know you're in the shit if you have to look at a log file. So, Dear Ed Jump. And you might be wondering, why do you need Dear Ed Jump? Well, um, if you use Dear Ed in a buffer, does it actually jump to that file? No, it, it uh, tries to show the directory. I like using Dear Ed Jump because it will uh, open the directory that the current file, the buffer rep the file represented by the current buffer, uh, it will open the Dear Ed buffer for that directory, and then it will put the cursor directly on the, the file that you're currently looking at. Uh, so it can be really easy to get around. Like, for instance, if I wanted to quickly jump up and open a different file in this folder, I could just go do that uh, really, really quickly. So I do like that. Weird that it doesn't have a, a default binding, though. So I'll just leave this for now, I guess. Um, Dear Ed mode hook. I think I had something in there. High details mode. Uh, Dear Ed omit mode. Must have turned that off. Uh, Dear Ed, what does Dear Ed collapse do? Dear Ed collapse. It's a package I installed. Huh. Okay. Is there a description? I guess I should read the comments, shouldn't I? Oh. I don't want that, actually. If there's a chain of directories where each only has one child, they are concatenated together and shown on the first level in this collapsed form. So this is like how GitHub does file directory listings. I actually don't want that. So good that I'm taking that out. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that sticks around in my config that I, I don't even realize I have. And uh, sometimes it's better just not to, to keep it. I'll leave Dear Ed Ranger for now in case I need it. 
Ashra says, I'm back. What did I miss? I'm basically just, you know, doing direct configuration the whole time. But we're learning some things, I think. Okay. Uh, that's good enough for now. So I'm thinking else. Or what, what else do I want to look at? I have about 30 minutes left here. Let's go look at the show notes for today. Um, org bindings, S expression navigation. Certainly should look at that. Buffer switching. I never changed the Vertigo settings on that. Still debating. DJ Cthulhu says, removing bloat. I approve. Yeah, you got to go clean out all the cruft every now and then. Like I thought I did at some point recently, but then it turns out there's a lot of crap in there that still needs to be taken out. So maybe I need to be going through and doing this kind of cleanup session more frequently because there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Ashraz is pulling out the uh, the manual uh, key bindings here. Control H R M D R E D R E T. Control H R M D R E D. You can actually do Control H Capital R, right? No. Oh. What is that then? Control H uh, R. Wait. Control H R M. Oh, the Emacs manual. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Control H R Control H R M D R E D. Cool. Navigation. Special motion commands in the D R E D buffer. D R E D jump. See, look. Control X, Control O. Oh, you know why this is the case? The freaking Jabber package took over Control X, Control J. I thought that was a default binding, and it is apparently. But uh, the Jabber package just went and took it over. Let me go check that out. DW Social is that the one? Jabber. Mm, where is it? Uh, Jabber. For some reason, rip grep cannot. Oh, there it is. No, it's not. <laughs> For some reason, uh, rip grep can't actually search in my uh, Emacs files anymore, and I have no idea why. Let's do a uh, Control U, rip grep. No, Control U, Control P F. Yeah, this one. Okay, Jabber. It's not in there. And I think it's just because the package is in my Elpa folder. Or do I have it in my Geeks config? Uh, David Will, packages, no. Services, Emacs, not that one. Emacs, this one. Okay, it's not here. Good. So I just need to go into the Elpa folder and just delete this thing. Jabber, there it is. So, um, K, right? No, Mark K. Killed one line. Does it, that doesn't actually kill it, though. Yeah, it doesn't delete the file. So what is the DRED delete? Oh, capital D. Fine. So we got that out now. Let me just restart Emacs. Gun says, does the Jabber package use the global map? It, it binds a prefix to control X, control J, which I don't like. Uh, whatever, one, two, three in the YouTube chat says, I just figured this out to rename a lot of files in DRED. There's an edit in place mode. Oh yeah, I use that often. It's very nice. When I download, um, uh, media files from the internet that, uh, you know, I can't really say where I get them from or, or what kind of uh, commercial content they may contain. I'm not saying talking about anything illicit. I'm talking about things you would see on a television, perhaps. Uh, sometimes it's nice to go and clean up the file names by using the DRED uh, edit mode. But I'm not uh, advocating for any kind of downloading of uh, proprietary video files from the internet on shady websites. I would never do that. I'm not evil, as we said. Okay, what was I doing before I started uh, sending innuendos about uh, television pri piracy? 
Ah. Uh, dear Red Jump, Control X J. Function definition is void, S equals. I must have some other hook that's being executed. Let's go into an actual uh, folder. Whoa, function definition is not, is void. All right, so I'm using S equals somewhere. <laughs> that's fun. What did I do? Dear Ed is busted. Ashra says, what shady websites? Please name them so we can ban them on this channel. Systemcrappers.cc. Yeah, that's not a, that, that's a bad, uh, bad domain, isn't it? Okay, so Dear Ed's broken. At least I have another Emacs session up where I could go and try to fix it. Uh, let's see. Dot files, Emacs, modules. What was it? Core. Now, there was the S equals. I thought that I had... Um... Oh, that's really interesting. Uh, one of the packages I was pulling in apparently used S.el, and I'm not importing it directly here. Carswell's code says, uh, getting rid of evil, evil, tell me that's not true. I'm getting rid of evil for my own configuration. I'm not saying that anybody else should. Uh, Ashra says, it seems like you might have to declare Emacs bankruptcy. I might need to. I might need to, for real. Like, there's a lot of stuff I don't need to use anymore. I should probably just start over from scratch. I haven't actually done a full Emacs bankruptcy ever. I've just been limping along with the same configuration, just, you know, sort of moving things around, putting it in other places, but there's a lot of stuff that doesn't need to be there. All right. So, um, S equals, why am I using that? I don't need to use that. What was I thinking? String equal. String equal P, right? String equal, what the hell am I doing? Don't ask me what I was smoking that day. All right. Oh, there we go. I closed the wrong Emacs. That's okay though. Scrapping system using cat is that. So we have no music and the stream chat uh, went away because I killed the wrong Emacs. That's okay. We'll fix it. Uh, let's just make sure that Dear Ed works first. Okay, it's all good. Repeat with J, Control J. Now, why exactly? Huh. Why? That's weird. I don't know why there's a repeat key for, for Dear Ed Jump. It's kind of weird. Okay, let me fix the uh, stream audio because it's going to be really weird not hearing music when I do this. Let's start over with a, a fresh Emacs. I don't know which one is the right one anymore. Borussia says, Monday's live stream, configuring Emacs bindings on VS Codium. Yeah, we're not doing that. We're not opening that program. Trust me on that. I don't see any point in doing that. Uh, Amy says, a string equal. So there's actually a built-in string equal. That'll be pretty nice. Okay, so let me load up. There we go. Now we got some music again. Now I need to uh, OBS WebSocket connect. Ah, require DW streaming. Jeez, OBS WebSocket connect. Yes, I am authenticated. And then uh, intro to screen. Okay, now the volume is at the right level. You just saw how I start up streams. And then a uh, live start chat. Now I can close this and I will refresh the chat widget. That should do the job. We'll see if the IRC chat shows up again in a moment. Somebody say something in the uh, IRC chat. There it is. Thank you, Ashras. Cool. So let's go back to dot files, Emacs, um, modules, core. I think that we're better on the Dear Ed situation now. It's looking pretty good. 
Uh, P now works, N now works correctly. Let's put, um, what is it called? Keycast mode on. Oh, left pads here, oh boy. Wait, where did my, oh, the browser closed because, uh, that's fun, okay. Let me uh, pop this back up again then. No, wrong, wrong screen. There it is. Cool. Just got to pull the, the chat back up because I, because I launched Chrome from inside of uh, Emacs. When I killed the Emacs session, it also killed the child process of uh, Chrome running. So I lost the uh, chat display. Okay. Bab says, I think I came to terms with the fact that I'm going to drop evil mode whenever I switch to Colmac. Thoughts about keyboard layouts? Yeah, once again, for me, um, I don't want to change to a layout that's going to affect my ability to use a, uh, a laptop keyboard. So I know that I can set my laptop keyboard to use Colmac too, but I'm just trying to, to reduce the amount of mental changes I have to make to switch between computers. So... People are freaking out in the chat because I use Chrome. I only use Chrome for certain things because Firefox is what I use normally, but Chrome for, uh, I had to use Chrome in the past for certain things like loading up um, my multi-streaming service. There's certain things for some reason in Firefox it didn't work right with, but I think it had to do with my, what was it called? Uh, Dbus and Flatpak setup. Shady websites. No, this time it's not for shady websites. Actually, this version of Chrome that you saw installed, I had to install that on this machine because of Guile Hoot, because that was the unstable version that had the latest uh, GC features in it that Hoot needed. I don't need it anymore though. Chrome for when you don't want to when you don't want to leak your browser browser history, or maybe when I do want to leak my browser history to Google. William Gibson fan, uh, burning Chrome. I am a William Gibson fan. All right. Did I try Dvorak? No, I did not try Dvorak. I had a coworker that used Dvorak and I tried to use his computer one day to de debug an issue uh, with some code. And I was like, man, this is uh, madness. I know Dvorak is probably better. Colmac is probably better, but I got other things to do uh, instead of like try to remap my my mental mapping for typing on a keyboard all day. Uh, use a browser you don't normally use so you don't leak browsing history on live stream. Well, sure, I should do that, but I don't really look at anything other than just like, you know, things that I talk about on this channel. So sure, maybe you'll see uh, the uh, history link for me going to my bank website or something. Except for the illicit websites I was talking about for downloading uh, copyrighted content. Peter says, I used Dvorak to learn blind typing, but returned to QWERTY for compatibility later. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's fun to experiment with new things. It can be fun to learn how to use new key mappings and stuff. Uh, weird keyboard layouts like there was one that I got at some point called the uh, Expose keyboard. Expose ergonomic mechanical keyboard. I actually got one of these. Not the newer versions of it. This looks cooler than what I had, but uh, an older version. And they had the keyboard mappings a little bit different. And sure, like I learned how to type on this and it was fine. It was cool. But uh, in the end, I just went back to a normal keyboard because switching between that keyboard or a normal style keyboard, there was a little bit of a issue with that. Oslo says, you don't want your wife to see that you've been browsing vacation getaway package sites? Uh, yeah, I, I don't do that <laughs> because I'm a bad husband. Uh, try Neo 2. Gives you the arrow keys, numbers, and special cares in the home row. Even Greek letter letters are built in. Maybe. 
Rosia says, using Dvorak for 20 years and no sweat. Well, that's cool. I mean, if you use it long enough, probably you can... It's, it's almost like speaking multiple languages. Probably you just get used to switching back and forth. All right, back to what I was doing. Uh, we had talked about uh, looking at uh, some S-Expression navigation keys, which would be useful. Uh, I do have smart parens set up. Smart parens. So um, I have smart parens turned on. I'm using this instead of par edit because I don't really know par edit that well. Uh, I also don't really know smart parens that well, but it, the default behavior just sort of works. Uh, Master Roman says, uh, did you learn Greek already? Oh, he. I didn't really learn it very well. I need to learn it better so I can function properly in this country and not have my wife take care of me like I'm a baby. Um, so there's this SPU smart parens bindings, which sets up some default bindings for smart parens, which should help, I think. What is the map? Okay, initiate smart parens mode map. So let's see, there's a lot of control meta bindings here. Uh, e, F, K, N, P, that does seem like normal stuff. So what if I uh, split this window vertically? Uh, resize it a little bit. I tell you what, uh, having these repeat mode maps in Emacs, I don't know what it was like before, if they, if it worked like this, but being able to hit control X curly bracket and then, you know, repeat those keys is pretty nice. You don't have to set up any fancy uh, repeat maps of your own to have uh, convenient movement keys for resizing uh, windows and whatnot. So back in this buffer, if I use control meta E, it's up and down. Uh, let's see, D is down, S expression, E, e is up. But see, up is kind of weird to me. Uh, let's see, back, forward. Is forward inside of a single S expression? It does look like that, okay. Um, control meta W is copy. That's kind of interesting. What does it actually copy? Oh, it only copies the current thing. Maybe I have to have it on a paren for it to copy the whole expression. Uh, let's see, control meta F, F, F. B, B, B. Okay, at the same level of uh, wrapping, I think it navigates. Uh, control meta D goes inside, then you can go back and forth. But I think if you go forward, it just pops back out again. So, uh, what was it? It wasn't E, it was D. Go down, E goes up. For some reason, up goes out. Which doesn't make any sense to me. Can someone explain that to me? Do they know? So I'm using, I'm outside of this expression. I use control meta F to go forward and control meta B to go backward. That makes sense. If I go use control meta D to go into the expression and then control meta E, which is supposed to be up, down versus up, up goes out instead of going back up to the front, which is what I was expect, expected to do. Is there a different thing for that? Backward up expression? Oh, maybe that's it. It's uh, control meta U. So, what was it? D and U. Okay, D and U, fine. This actually wouldn't be too bad, I think. Because um, these are pretty well mapped to the default navigation key names. So I think I would be able to get used to this pretty easily and navigate around things better than I normally do inside of uh, list buffers. What else we have here? Uh, copy S expression. So if I use Control Alt W, it's supposed to copy. If I use Control uh, Y, then it will paste. Okay, that's cool. That makes sense. If I go forward, no. I need to go down and then forward to this expression. If I copy here, what does it do? Control out W, go forward, control. Okay, so it copies the next expression. That's pretty useful, I think. Um, select next thing, control meta square bracket. Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. What about, there's no select previous thing. Control meta E is end of defund. Okay, so maybe that's what the mapping is. 
who broke the chat? Oh, did is the chat broken because Gun is using um, umlauts and characters? It looks fine, doesn't it? Unless I'm missing some things. Still works? Okay, good. Uh, backward, down, S expression. Control, meta, A. Backward, uh, up, S expression. What was that again? U? I don't know what that means. Maybe I wouldn't use that one so much. Uh, mark X S expression. So control meta space. Hmm. Maybe I need to go to to go before one. Control meta space. Okay, that makes sense. Control meta space. That makes sense. Okay. And then if I go up, eh, I like that. But it didn't copy. Let's see. Uh, I need to use the normal Alt W, I guess. Okay, cool. So, um, I don't know. This The key binding setup in Smart Parens seems pretty good to me. I don't know what's different about how par edit works compared to this, but to me, this would be enough. Uh, there's some barfing and slurping uh, commands that would be useful for moving things around. However, I don't like the fact that they use arrow keys for those bindings. Uh, is there any other? No, it's just uh, arrow keys. I don't like arrow keys for things. So if I were to use control meta left, yeah, that does make sense. Okay, and then control left. Uh, okay, I see, that's cool. I guess I don't use that so much that having to reach over to arrow keys would be so bad, but I would prefer it not to be left and right. But then the question becomes, what's the alternative? I don't know what the, what binding I would I would set it to. Meta F. Uh, okay, so going based on symbols. Okay. Uh, unwrap S expression. What does that mean? Oh, okay. So let's uh, put our cursor right here. Meta delete. Okay, so it basically takes the uh, whatever level of wrapping you have on the S expression off. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Hey, Christian. Who wants more modifiers in their life? It's not that bad. It's not that bad. Brosia says, arrows are not evil. They point to something. Well, having to move my hand off the home row is evil, in my opinion. I don't want to have to move my hand off, off of home row. Because I don't even have to move my hand off home row to use the mouse because I'm using track point. Uh, so if I have to move my hand off of the home row to use arrow keys, then that just seems like a major violation of my efficiency. So maybe you're wondering why S expression navigation relates to getting rid of evil. Uh, it doesn't really for me so much, but since I'm trying to switch to vanilla to be more efficient in certain ways, uh, this actually does fit into my mentality about switching, especially because a lot of um, Lisp navigation packages like Smart Parens, Paredit, etc., are using the key binding semantics of the built-in Emacs key bindings. So it's an opportunity to try to use some of these things as well. Purple G says, I can't believe David is leaving the evil cult. Well, you know, there's something to be said for using less stuff. Uh, alter alternate Ved says, create a navigation letter layer and move arrows to home row. That is a possibility. I would need to use uh, one of these fancy packages that uh, you've all been talking about. Cal2001 says he wants to dedicate full time for the System Crackers cult. This is not a cult. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're good on that. Anything else that I wanted to do that uh, is worth talking about? Uh, let me just use some better navigation here. Um, dot net. Find file, March 29. Hey, how about that? That's much better than digging through 
uh, directories. Uh, Ezekiel says, that's what a cult leader would say. Shh, don't tell them. Don't tell them, okay? You, you shouldn't tell people they're in a cult because then they'll realize they're in a cult and they'll leave. Christian says, okay, fair. If you live in these standard key bindings, it's easier to try combos and modifications. Um, yes. Christian says, I'm happy to do most things with a leader key, though. Yeah, you know, leader key is nice. Um, I actually stopped using Space Max style leader keys or Vim style leader keys. I've been using Control C for what you might consider a leader key for a while now. And also just, I've been using more Control C, Control uh, X style key bindings for a lot of things over the last year. Left Path says, but whose cult is it? I have no idea. Um... It's definitely not the cult of left pad. I'll say that. So, um, yeah, I, I'm trying to just be a little bit less, like rely on less things that are not standard or key bindings, at least. Just for me, it makes sense because I'm using different Emacs configurations. I need to be able to like make a minimal configuration to give to someone uh, for doing something like, let's say, you know, basic guile development, guile scheme development. I have to create a configuration then if I want to do demonstrations with that configuration, I have to be able to use it effectively and not stumble around because I don't have evil mode set up. Uh, Kolkoskan says less is more. Less is uh, easier, maybe. Gun says cult of the dead key. Yes. Emacs mentioned in the profile. RMS cult. Yeah, we're definitely not an RMS cult here. He's had his time. Now we're a distro tube cult. Uh, let's see. The office Creed scene about cults. Yeah, Creed, Creed is a funny guy. Uh, yes, Ashraz, that's a great question. Speaking about configuration, when will you update your dot .files main branch? <laughs> How long has it been? Let's see. Uh, David will dot .files. Um, master. Three years ago, I have not pushed a commit to master in three years. The reason why I didn't do that is because I've had my old uh, configuration website that was built from the master branch because it used the literate config. Um, but now the config site is broken and people keep telling me about that. It, it happened around the time that the denial of service attack happened to Source Hut because the config site was being hosted on, uh, on Source Hut. <clears throat> so since they changed all their hosting situation, that site went away. So now I have to come up with a new config site. Yes, three years. Can you believe we've been uh, talking about Emacs on this channel for almost four years now? Uh, Ashra says, people are always asking questions about your config and I always need to jump into that repo and figure out what the actual branch is. Yeah, I need to fix that. There's a, no a lot of things I need to fix in my config. Simplifications, getting a website generated from it again, merging Geek's home branch back into main branch, cleaning up some stuff. Alejandro says, we have the Monday live stream. Are you going to make me actually do a live stream? People keep talking about this now. Uh, Gmien says, does the Emacs key bindings kill your pinky finger? No, uh, not as much as you would think. But that's because I have uh, caps lock bound to control. So it's more on the home row. Peter says, time flies when tweaking your config. Yeah, it does. Shom says, you just need to update the A record to point to the new source hut IP. Yeah, I really need to update the website because it's way out of date. Christian says, maybe change the GitHub default branch. You know, let's just fix this right now. Let's, let's not talk about it. Let's just fix it. I'm going to commit some stuff to the branch and we're going to push it to master and be done. We're going to do it live. All right, let me see what else I changed here. I'm not gonna do clean commits on this, I don't care. Normally I would use a nice commit message, but uh, that's not today. Some of these things got formatted. I turned on some some kind of uh, Emacsless formatting, so there's just a lot of things that now are being formatted when they didn't used to, so I have a lot of edits to the files. Uh, that shouldn't be like that. I'm going to get rid of this hunk. 
Evil Keys. Um, okay, still thinking about that one. Don't need to deal with that right now. Oh, I got a lot of stuff staged because crap. Let's let's start over. Uh oh. Look like the stream blipped for a second. I don't know why. <clears throat> Muddy live stream is a meme. Yes. <laughs> See, this is the problem when we start talking. You know, joking around in here. People actually, you know, believe it. Okay, start over. It's some of this stuff, uh, well, you know, that's fine. Where am I? I'll leave that alone. I will leave that alone, too, for now. Uh, that's fine. Or... Yeah, I don't want the autosave thing on. I'll just leave that in there. Visible bell. Oh, let's open that line. So yeah, we'll, we'll we'll stage that hunk. This one, mm, I'll leave that for now. Yeah, we definitely want this one, and we want this one. That's just formatting. I think I've also disabled this on the other system as well, so I'll leave that there because I don't want to conflict with my other config. Yeah, let's take Lispy out. I think that's it for now. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? Uh, whoops. Let's uh, get rid of that. Not using that. I'll leave those in. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Emacs, uh, some more uh, evil mode removal fix-ups. And then now we're gonna go over to master branch and we're gonna merge, oh, <laughs> I need to stash everything here before I do that. Oh crap. Why is it, um, I'm trying to like, I'm trying to collapse all the stuff here. Uh, Magit collapse, Magit fold. What's it called? Baby induced weariness and bad decisions kick in. Yes, it definitely is baby induced weariness. That's for sure. Ashra says, not a cult, just an editor and escape is banned. I love these merch ideas. They're great. Um, God. What a mess. I have to... Something's different about this uh, stash both, stash index. I think I want to stash only the index. Don't I? Oh, no, that's not right. Fine, now, master branch. Yuck. Am I there? No, it's not working. I may have to do this some other time because I think that, uh, yeah, yeah, I got some problems here. Oh shit. That's weird, every time I stash my files it takes enough cpu that it makes this this uh, stream blip for a moment okay anyway let's not do that right now because it's going to cause problems uh, i'm overdue for, to end the stream anyway let me just check the chat one last time yes definitely a cult definitely not a cult i didn't say that uh, Gun says, is that magic and evil or vanilla? It's definitely vanilla. All right, that's it. Hopefully that was entertaining to some degree. 
Uh, hopefully it answers your questions about whether it's worthwhile to get rid of evil mode. I think it is, at least for me. I'm going to try it for a while, and if I go back to evil, you'll know. I'll tell you. Um, but I'm, I'm kind of committed to this for a while just because I feel like I need to get more familiar with the built-in key bindings and the way of doing things. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with my hands and my fingers if uh, I start you know, complaining about you know, wrist pain and I start wearing like black gloves all the time, then you'll know that something's wrong. But yeah, I don't think it'll happen. So thank you all for being here today. Really appreciate your time and attention. Uh, leave a comment if you have any suggestions for things I should try with the vanilla Emacs key bindings, or if you want to just complain at me for leaving evil behind, which is also fine. I don't really care too much. And uh, I hope you all have a uh, great weekend. Until next time, happy hacking. We'll see you.